Welcome to Biblical Genetics. I'm your host, Dr. C, coming at you today from Niagara Falls. I'm actually on the American side. Behind me, you see American Falls. Niagara Falls is just over there. This is an amazing place. I've never actually been here before. So I'm excited. It's kind of cold. It's early November. It's rainy. You can see I'm wearing a hat. In fact, my hands are, are, are icing. But hey, it's worth being outside and it is worth exploring God's world because God has created some amazing things. And you know what? Niagara Falls is an amazing place. But I'm not here to talk about water. I'm actually going to use this as a bridge into a very interesting thing. You see, we might be at a unique place in history, world history, where we all of a sudden have more data than we have theory. What I mean is data, I mean genetic data. It's like if I had a cup of water and you gave me one cup of water per year and I could study that cup of water all year long, what do I be missing? Is all the water flowing behind me for the year. That's what it's like to be a geneticist in today's world. There's too much to study. We don't know where to start. We don't know where to go. And you can spend time doing this and then you miss everything else. So what we try to do is give you a 10,000 foot view, have a lot of fun on biblical genetics. You've heard me talk about the Human Genome Project. That was completed way back in 2003, and honestly, that's back in the dark ages of genetics. Everything has changed since then. I mean, that cost the U.S. taxpayers $3 billion. It took about 10 years. That's about a dollar per letter. I mean, that is crazy. Another massive genetic sequencing project is called the HapMap Project. They take a shortcut. Instead of sequencing the entire genome, they only looked at um, letters that vary between people. And they looked at a couple of million letters that are found at a greater than 1% frequency in the human population. It was a milestone. We could tell so much interesting things about the human race from that. That was completed in 2009. But even that is nothing compared to what we have today. Next up is what's called the Thousand Genomes Project. The U.S. government decided to sequence a thousand human genomes. Actually, they did about 2,000 human genomes. But there's a problem with it. Same problem with the, hu the first human genome project. That is, it's low quality. In order to sequence a genome, remember a couple episodes ago, I talked about um, having to sequence 300 letters at a time. You do a lot of things, a lot of sequences, then you line them up. And as you line them up, you can actually construct a genome sequence. Well, back in the day, that's how they did it. And even a thousand genomes, it's light sequencing. It's maybe 15 fold coverage or something like that in the good parts the Y chromosome which I like to study with a lot lower coverage it's actually frustrating because well the error rate in the data is still high enough that I can't quite trust every single letter so I look at it as like is this a mutation rate from one person to the next or is it an error rate inherent in the data so moving on from the thousand genomes project which was completed in 2015 Another amazing thing is called the Simons Genome Diversity Project. They look at 260 different people from 127 different populations and they sequence them to a very high quality. That is fantastic. I actually have the Y chromosome data from Simons. I've been using it, I've been studying it. It's really good stuff. I'm so happy that we finally moved away from the old fashioned light sequencing that we had for about 15 years. Next up, after the Thousand Genomes Project is the 100,000 Genomes from the, from the UK. It's a, a medically informative uh, thing. They're trying to do precision medicine by sampling 100,000 people's genomes. That's really, really cool. But that's nothing because the US government has launched the All of Us Project. They're trying to sample one million human genomes. In fact, you can sign up for that program if you want and submit your DNA. In fact, just, just recently, I, I um, came across a paper, they looked at 690 very high quality genomes from around the world and from just this week, 5,000 genomes from Singapore. Only Singapore, 5,000 genomes. This is nuts. I mean, give me that cup again. Give me a thousand lifetimes. I can only sample what's in my cup. That would take me 5,000 years and I would not even touch the data we have now. But you know, the data we have are challenging a lot of our assumptions of human history, especially after you throw in ancient DNA, which again is low quality, but it does tell us a lot about human nature and human ancestry. Ancient DNA is another thing that's completely changing everything we understand. Now that we've done a lot of sampling in large populations, we're starting to tap into the smaller isolated populations. And those groups are gonna tell us a lot more about human history than we even know now. 
Because it's nice to sample Europeans or Han Chinese. But what about some of the minority groups that live in some isolated regions? That's going to be fascinating. I can't wait. I love genetics. I love studying this stuff. You know what? Right now I'm really wet. I'm getting cold. So I'm going to sign off. This is a lot of fun. Have a great time. I'll see you soon as we dig into some more, let's say, biblical aspects of biblical genetics. Don't forget to like our videos. Don't forget to share us. Don't forget to follow us. If you follow us on YouTube, make sure you follow through and click on the bell so that you get notified of new episodes. But until then, Biblical Genetics is there for you. Creation.com is there for you. I'm here for you. Send me a message. I want to answer your questions. Have a great day. Goodbye.